play a role for you to become a better tester, right? In addition to the automation. So that those are all those things will be covered. Um, Sumit is the lead and he would be um, taking the session, right? And obviously, as you all know, Codathon is something that uh, by definition, it's the community uh, experts teach the community members. So if you are in the session and if you have expertise, obviously you can talk to Sumit and uh, and fill in some of the sessions um, for, for him and help him on that. Okay. So that's the start of mission. I have a question. Yeah. Here is email address, please. Hello. Sorry, there was. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just have a question. So for the test automation, uh, uh, do we need to know any scripting or we have this Python scripting session considering that? Yeah, I think you know Python, right? So so that's the first basic thing that you need to know and then rest you will build it as things um, evolve. And oh, okay. Sumit is also creating some kind of an open source using open sources. Right, uh, like Selenium, and then adding some wrapper on top of that, and creating some open source to kind of uh, uh, train you guys uh, better, and maybe use those open source in your companies to do better things, right? And and also contribute in building that open source. So he's also working on that. Uh, he's putting a lot of effort to to really do the test automation session, a, a great one, right? So so I'm sure that you guys you guys will benefit. So if you are uh, if you want to build a career on that. Then you register Thank in you. this test automation. So there was, was there any other question? Father, this is Abdul. Yeah, Abdul. Can you share uh, Sumit's email ID, please? Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are asking from the contribution point of view, right? Uh, yes, Abdul? that's right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, please reach out, right? Uh, because yeah. by definition, see, we don't own this. Uh, by the way, as you all know, I keep telling this. We are nobody's owners of nonprofit. We are all uh, have to contribute together to make it success. And in fact, um, uh, I have another topic to to talk. But anyway, so so let me complete this. So those who are interested in test automation, please click that and go and register it, um, and and take benefit of that program. And then the next one is if you see below, this is um, the cyber security. Uh, this I want every one of you to join. It's very important, right? Whether you are a testing professional or an operations professional or a development professional developer or whatever, you know, it's very, very important for you to know different technologies at a very, very high level. Um, if you, you know, depending upon how many meetups you have attended in the past, uh, we have been covering different technologies in every meetup, right? So for example, February, we covered um, AI and cloud and then in uh, March, April, we covered Industry 4.0. What is it from the IoT point of view? And in June, we are trying to help you to understand big picture of um, cybersecurity. How is it going to help you this technology in your career? And what is what is it? And and there's going to be three great speakers. Uh, you know, uh, top level speakers are there in that uh, in that session. So so this is something that I recommend every one of you to join. Right? Uh, make sure that you go and register it um, today uh, before you forget. And coming back to uh, my point of, uh, you know, uh, no one is owner of this. We are all the owner of this uh, nonprofit is, is I wanted you all to think how you can contribute to grow this. Uh, I mean, bringing your friends, colleagues, families or whatever to help yourself, help them and help all of us. And and that's a that's a kind request. I always keep saying um, on that context. Um, I also wanted to you know, express something about uh, one of the proposal Jyoti, who is in the call, gave us. Um, she was saying that uh, you know um, that that we may have to form some kind of a study group. See, see, like like you know, in schools time we do right. Whatever we learn in these sessions are good, but then offline um, you have two options, right? One option is you can uh, go home and uh, study, read it by yourself, and some people prefer to do a group study, right? Um, study group, so called us. So Jyoti was saying uh, if someone is interested, uh, she wants to form a, a study group. So so people can uh, study together, right? Um, this is outside of um, of, uh, of these uh, programs. So what uh, I was telling her is uh, we can help you to enable that. We can actually create a meeting invite in, um, you know, whichever the time you guys fix um, that you all wanted to come together and do study group. What we can do is we can create a separate uh, meeting invite uh, and then uh, share that invite to you guys 
So you can use the Microsoft Teams to come together and, and do your study whenever that you wanted to do the study group. Right, so, so this was some idea that uh, Jyoti brought it up and I'm not sure how many are interested. If someone is interested on that, reach out to Jyoti um, in our common WhatsApp group. So Jyoti can collect the list of people and then agree on the timing and then Jyoti, you can come back to us and then we can create a meeting request and give it to you. Then you can use the test open platform for that study group if you, if you are interested. Make sense? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, because you know, I want really I want every one of you to kind of use this platform to to the best that you can and and grow yourself, right? So that's what I I wanted to do. Um, if you know, that's why I also keep telling you are all we are all the owners of this community, right? So we all have to come together to do things within the community. If we start doing outside the community, then this community will not grow. So whatever ideas that we have together, we have to come into this community and do it within this community. OK, so that's uh, that's my uh, uh, request. So Jyoti, I'll leave it to you. Uh, uh, Jyoti, oh, sorry, Joy, Joy, I'll leave it to you. I think I was saying wrong name. Joy, I will leave it to you to kind of uh, take a lead on that and come back to us and I, we will definitely help you from the community what we can do. OK, All right, Adam. I will call Perfect. you. And the last one is, uh, is there's some uh, uh, bad news and the good news, right? Bad news is when we started the community, we kind of um, we kind of uh, started using the Microsoft Teams trial version. And uh, now we, you know, uh, we got approval from Microsoft to, to have a nonprofit uh, Teams, which is for which is free for us, which is good. Uh, and the trail is expiring. So now we need to migrate it into the nonprofit uh, Teams. Um, so we are trying to see if we can do that seamlessly. But in case if you are not able to do seamlessly, we may have to um, get you guys on board again manually when we are ready. OK, just be prepared uh, about this uh, uh, as, as FYI for your information. OK, we need probably one more little effort for you to move from this teams to the other teams and join. Right. It's unfortunate we have to do this, but uh, looks like we may end up doing that. If that happens, we might require your support. All right. Great. Um, Perfect. I think, yeah, I think we're ready to start. We have around 30 yep. people. Yep. Awesome. You're good to go, Mr. Uh, Shad and Hethel. Great. So can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Great. So uh, today we're going to be doing libraries in Python. Uh, but before we start with that, let's go over the exercise that I gave uh, during the last session. So I'd like to first know how many of you guys were able to complete the exercise and get a uh, reasonably correct answer. Hi, sir. This is Joy. I have completed, but for one scenario, my code is not working. So if you can just take a look at it whenever you have some time, I would appreciate that. Yeah, so uh, do you want to tell us about your thought process for um, that answer? Like how you thought over the problem? Yeah, sure. Just give me one second here. Sure. So what I did in my uh, coding was, so this is basically the logic. I tried to split up the main array into two different sub arrays. Okay. And then I wanted to eliminate the duplicates. So if there is a duplicate, I return false to the main function. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. So now in my test scenario, I added one list um, that has two max values. I mean, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but in yeah, so way, it should fail, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, correct. But it's not failing. OK, OK, so uh, yeah, so that's something that you can probably fix with an if condition, right? And I'll go over my solution to this problem. And uh, I used, you know, quite a few if expressions. Um, so it'll sort of show you how to structure a solution for uh, an exercise. So uh, let's go over my solution here. Now, this is not the only way to do it. I saw some some of you guys use different ways, and that's correct as well. Um, we aren't really going to go into, you know, uh, 
figure the time complexity or something like that of the code. We're just going to see how we can come up with a effective solution. So whenever uh, when I said that we have a mountain array, there are a few things we can do to basically just rule out whether something is going to be a, a mountain array or not, right? So if you have a list, for example, which is which has a length of uh, two, right? Automatically, you know that that is not going to be a mountain array. So you can just put in a condition over here, which says that if the length of the list that you're inputting into the function is equal to or less than two, just return false, right? <clears throat> is that is that clear to everyone? That's a really uh, simple way to deal with, you know, uh, lists like this one. I think uh, didn't it be one? Sorry. Uh, if length of a is uh, equal to or less than one, shouldn't it be one? Because we start the indexing from zero, right? If there are, let's say, if there are three numbers in the list, one, two, and three, or one, two, and one, still this is considered to be a mountain array, right? Um, that's not true yes. for the length function, right? So with the length function, it's going to just tell you the size of this. So the length of this should be two. Let me just confirm that, right? Oh, the length doesn't um, go with the indexing. Like the length will that wouldn't that start with zero and one? Like L let me just show you. No, so as you can see with the length, it's basically oh. telling you the amount of Number elements of inside of this, right? So you I can see there, okay. there are two elements inside. That's why with the length function, um, you're going to get the number of elements within an, uh, within a data type. Okay, I'm glad Got that it. that's something we could clear up. Now, um, another thing that you can rule out when dealing with a mountain array is that th whatever the max number is, there shouldn't be duplicates of the max number. Right. So if you have any list where let's say you have three is the max number, right? If there's another three anywhere in the list, again, based on the definition that I gave during the last class of the mountain array, you're automatically going to say that if it's going to be false, right? If the max number is duplicated. Now, another thing we can do is um, we can find the index of the max number. Now, in a mountain array, the max number cannot be at the end or at the start of the list, right? If if you have the max number, that means this is not a mountain array. So you can do just this if check to see, and this one is checking if the, in the largest number is at the very right-hand side of the list. And this is going to return a false if that's true. Can everyone understand uh, this command or this line? Could you explain again, Saad? Yeah, so what we're doing is we have a built-in function in Python which will give you the max of any list, right? That's called the max function. Now, what we can do is we can actually use the index function and put within the index function the max number, right? That's going to return the index of the max number within this list. So if I put over here, for example, 10. the command max a is going to detect 10 over here. Now, when you put that within the index, it's going to give me 0, 1, 2. So it's going to tell me the location of the max number. Now, what I can do is I can ensure that this location is not over here at the end of the list, because if it is, then this is not a mountain array. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK, great. Now, uh, again, we use the same command over here to get the index of the max number, right? Then what I did was that I sliced the lists based on the max number. So we created two lists, list one, list two. Now I use the slicing syntax to generate these lists. So this list is going to start from zero index, and it's going to go up to the index of the max number. 
and this list is going to start with the index of the max number and it's going to uh, go towards the end of the list. Are these two lines clear? Again, if you have any questions, you can uh, ask them on call or you can write them down in the chat. So I'm going to assume you guys understand this one. At the same time, I'm going to set a counter equals to zero. So now I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to iterate over the, this element, list one and list two. And I'm going to ensure that the, uh, the first number is smaller than the number after it. So what this is doing, let me just show you here. It's it, it's it's split this into two lists, right? So now you have this has a list over here. And all we're checking is that this number is smaller than this number. This number is smaller than this number. And every time that condition is met, we're increasing count by one. We're going to do that with this one. And then for the second list that we've sliced, the reverse should be true. So the first number should be greater than the second number. Provided that that's true, we're going to increase count by one. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check if we counted the uh, uh, check the count that we've calculated, right? The way we're going to do it, we're going to add the lengths of each list. Now we're subtracting two from it. The reason we're subtracting two from it is because we're counting this in each of these uh, conditions. We're counting the max number as well, right? We're, we don't want to do that because this number we know is the max number. So that's why we're uh, iterating over the max number twice. That's why we're subtracting it, uh, subtracting, subtracting two from this. Provided that this condition is met, we're going to know that the mountain array is true. If it's not met, it's going to be false. So that right there is a relatively straightforward solution to the mountain array problem. Uh, does anyone have any difficulty understanding what I've done here? Yeah, can you? Sorry. Hello? Mm. I think Some... Srivitya is asking uh, one question. Slicing the second part of my array didn't work. Can you please help? Okay. Uh, slicing the? Yeah, the colon, maybe she's using right colon or not. I don't see the whole code. Okay, so you can f do slicing using this notation, right? So if there's anything yeah. uh, that you don't understand about this notation, let me know. It's so... fairly simple. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so but Saad, um, sorry to interrupt. Uh, so it was me who asked the question, but uh, the the um, the syntax which I used was like, uh, if you be, are you able to uh, look at your chat window? I think I did post my um, uh, just that one liner code in there. Um, that is the syntax I used, mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't for the first my first array. I used the same syntax with like instead of minus one, I put plus one number okay. one and then colon uh, peak index and then one it did give me the first uh, part of my array but for the second part it uh, it is returning an empty array uh, can you please let me know what is that i'm um, uh, what is the uh, mistake i'm doing in this syntax um, yeah so, okay Hethel, can you answer that yeah uh, because she's doing minus there are two columns is adding into the slicing so if you are starting from minus one to the peak index that's the one thing you can do or either from the peak index to the leave the end uh, end uh, index empty, so it's automatically go to the end of the array. So either use the first part minus one dot colon peak index, or use the peak index colon empty, like no end index, so it will automatically go for the end index. Yeah, you can see it's empty over here. This okay. part, right? it's okay. empty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what this uh, tells Python is uh, go to the end, right? And okay. empty at the start of the slicing notation is going to tell Python to go to the start. And okay. the second thing, second thing, uh, if you use the minus one colon peak array, it's going to be the reverse array, make sure. Because you're, you're indexing from negative, so it's going from negative to the other side. Yeah, that's what my thought was. Yes. What I was thinking while writing the syntax was like, so I want the numbers from the last of the, the last index of my array until the peak index. 
So that was the reason I wrote this syntax. Maybe like as you said, oh, I so what you what you did, you reverse the uh, uh, reverse the array, right? Um, I can probably edit the code in a way that it might work for that, um, but you can do this way, and it's uh, a bit easier. But yeah, Simple. you could you could possibly do it like that as well, right? So if you do minus one, you're basically going to reverse the array, and then you're going to check whether each first number is smaller than the number after it, right? That's what I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, I I, I think it's better. I use this um, the easiest yeah, version. Yeah, yeah, you can do it with reversing it as well, but it's a lot easier if you just do it without reversing. Okay, yeah, got it. Great. Does anyone else have questions on this problem? It was a bit complicated, but um, you know, since you guys had a lot of time, I decided that we should tackle it. Uh, I have a, like a little bit uh, more easier solution, just for a, without considering the time complexity and other things. Yeah, yeah. if you can do uh, a chat box, so just try to. It's just for basic to start up something, you know. Okay, so if you can share your screen, I'll stop yeah. sharing mine, and then you can show yours. Oh, oh wait, actually, someone had a question that they wrote in the chat. They were asking if you could explain the slice function. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, I, I'll do that for just uh, very quickly. Oh, we are busy discussing the other issues. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. all the uh, so. We went over how indexing works in Python, right? Uh, let's do one, two. So the way this is indexed is zero, one, two, three. Um, the way indexing works is we can access the individual indexes using this syntax. So let's say I want the first index and then I want the second one, right? So what I'm telling this is I'm telling, let me print it as well. So the way this is working is we are starting from the first index and then we're saying up to this point print this section over here, right? That's why I'm getting two. If I do zero, it'll be from here to two. Um, again, if I do without anything, same thing. So this is what I'm trying to get at. We're saying start from the start of the list which is going to be this section, and then go one index, and then two index over here. So that's why we're getting two uh, here. So this is a way we can access the indexes of a list. So it's think of it as a shortcut to access the index here. Does that make sense? And again, we went over uh, this part in the last few sessions, so you can obviously uh, return to the slides or the video uh, for that. Uh, Hethel, you were showing your solution? Uh, no, I can copy paste into the chat box so they can follow by their own. We don't want to cut the time off, you know? Okay, okay. So, so yeah, I can uh, just copy pasting and doing there. Okay, okay, great. Yeah. So let's go back to today's topic, right? So we're going to be doing modules and uh, libraries. So um, the, one of the best things about Python is that the developer community of Python is very large. So any developer can come up and create a Python library or a module and share it with everyone. Um, and you know, Python in terms of the new modules coming or new libraries being published every day is one of the leaders in terms of uh, the various languages that are uh, out there. Now. Um, all of these libraries that are created by developers are uh, most of the time available on GitHub. Um, to access them, you can uh, go on this website over here. This is the package manager for Python. I have it open. Um, so uh, you know you can see that right now there are 200 more than 200,000 projects that you can choose from, and they all do different things. And you know, almost 500,000 users are working on these packages. Um, they're also available on GitHub. You can actually see the content of these packages, right? You can actually see how they're made. Now, before we get into third-party packages, let's talk about what's included in uh, Python standard library. So when you guys installed Python for the first time, a lot of stuff or a lot of modules and libraries installed at the same time. 
and we call this Python standard library and it's very extensive. Um, let me show you what it looks like, right? So this is a reference website for the standard library. You can see that there are a lot of things that you can do just with the built-in standard library. Obviously, we don't have time to go through everything. I selected a few that we'll go over very quickly, but you know, there's a lot of stuff. There's stuff for networking, um, you know, internet protocols, uh, you know, uh, getting IP addresses of a, of a website, multimedia, audio, uh, a lot of stuff with text. There's just a lot of stuff here. and. You know, if you're interested in any of these, you should definitely go over this reference page to see what capabilities there are. The ones that we're going to be focusing on for today is the math um, built-in um, module and the date time one. And we'll also go over regular expression. So to access a module, you first need to write the import command, right? So we're accessing the math module. So again, uh, for this exercise, you, I want you guys to sort of uh, code along. So open a project and uh, import math to it. And now if you want to see what's included in this library, you can just do math and then dot. You can see we have a lot of mathematical functions that are already built in, right? We don't need to define the function functionality of these. The functionality has already been defined um, and we can just access them. So again, if you find if you want to find the log of a number, if you want to access the value of pi, um, you can do that, right? So let's do two of these. Uh, again, for today's session, we'd want to uh, really follow along. Oh, sorry. There you go. I was able to find the value of pi and also log base 10, 20. All right, again, this is something that I want you guys to do as I'm doing it. Um, one other thing that I forgot to mention, by the way, this is um, uh, some housekeeping stuff. So when I gave the last uh, question, um, the uh, mountain array one, uh, these questions are for your own understanding, right? So you don't necessarily have to upload the uh, solution somewhere. So I saw someone posted the solution on the file section of MS Teams. Um, it, you shouldn't do that because that section is reserved for uh, class material that we are creating. Um, once we start doing projects, we'll actually be using GitHub, right? Um, and unless we specify, do not uh, upload anything to the file section of MS Teams. So just a uh, small notice there. Uh, okay. Hisat, quick question. Yeah. Why did, why did you uh, enter exit after the import? OK, so uh, because I'm demonstrating this here, um, what the exit tells the script to do is just to stop everything when it uh, comes to line four. Um, I did this so it doesn't print out everything underneath, right? Because okay. I created this uh, script before uh, the session, and I want to use all of this. But for now, I just want to print up to line three. OK, now another section, uh, another uh, module that we can explore is called date time. Again, go uh, write date time, and then you can access the date time functionality again by the dot over here. So date time is very useful when you're dealing with data, which includes time. You can actually deal with it, right? You can calculate time differences and so forth. Um, you can also access your system's time at this point. That looks. There you go. This is the current time. And it's going to be system time that it's going to print out here. Another really interesting built in uh, module is called the time module. Um, this allows you to basically set up a counter. So, as you can see, I have, let's stop the code over. I'm specifying start time dot time. Now, why do I do dot over here? Because this is telling it to go in the time module dot and then select the time. So what it looks like is time dot. There is the first function time. This is how I can. Different ways I can use it. Now you can see the start time, we have an end time, and then we are going to print end minus start. This is going to give us the time that it took Python to print this command, right? 
let's see what we get. Let me just uh, comment these out. Uh, right now, because um, you know this is a very simple command, we're getting zero seconds. But if you can make it a bit more complex, there we go. This is a very long number. Uh, you can see it took 0 0.3 seconds for uh, Python to come up with an answer for it. So this is an interesting way that you know when you have complex solution, uh, complex exercises, or complex solutions like the mountain array solution, you can compare how good different solutions are by setting a timer around them and checking how long the solution takes. Any questions so far about libraries and uh, modules? Let me check the chat box. Is so Sad Pankaj here? Yes. Yeah, so, I, so when we use start and end actually, for what purpose? So when you want to find the time it took to calculate um, a certain line of code, right? So this could be multiple lines as well. You can see that between start and end, I put this command over here. If you want to know how long it took for this command to give you an answer, uh, you can use the time uh, library for it. This is the uh, difference between end time and start time. So this is the amount of time it took to print this. Answer. Uh, hold on a second. Hiral is asking something. I don't understand her question, I think. Can you repeat, uh, Hiral, what you are asking in your comment? Yes, uh, uh, I was just trying to suggest that, uh, you know, while, while, like, you know, explaining the code, uh, if we want to go back and understand, so maybe for some functions or some line of code, if there can be a comment, you know, about what it does, just a yes. brief. Yeah. OK, Thank OK. You. So I think uh, you got the point, right? Uh, yeah. Question? yeah, yeah, yeah. We, can, we can definitely do that. Yeah, OK. Um, but again, this is just me giving you an introduction to uh, different modules, right? So you have uh, Python provides extensive documentation on all of this on this page. So if you're interested in knowing, for example, how uh, certain functions in the math um, uh, module work. You can actually go on this page and it's going to give you examples. It's going to give you, you know, all the tools you need to mess around with the, uh, this. And yeah, for the next exercise, I will also add comments to the code. Thank you, Claude. Sure. So another built in oh, library. Wait, I actually it, have a question. Yeah. Um, so for for your uh, when you do print and to start, uh, I cl I clicked run like multiple times and it gave me a different like time every single time I clicked run. Yes. Is, yeah, is that so, normal? Yes, it is normal yeah. because there are a lot of background processes happening on your computer all the time, right? So whenever you do a uh, computation, your computer speed is going to depend on those processes as well. So if you have a lot of CPU usage already, you're going to get a slower time. Um, so for my answer over here will be different from someone's answer if they have a faster machine or a slower machine. Okay. Does that make sense? No, yeah, no, but my question is like what? on the same machine, I'm clicking run like multiple yeah. times and it's giving me different answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, you see so. the timer, timer, you, the date time timer is automatically like current time is 7 third. 7.36 and 13 second. when you run again and again, at that time your seconds is getting increased, right? Microsecond or millisecond. So depending on your one process is running, the other process so it's delaying your each task, each run, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think you were also asking about the start and end uh, time, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. So, so again, uh, at every you can check your task manager, your CPU usage is always changing. So uh, it's never constant. So that's why even on the same machine, you'll get a slightly variable time, uh, depending on how much background processes are running on your computer. OK. OK, Thank now um, yes. another built-in module is called uh, re or regular expression. So regular expression Sorry, is, your screen is disappearing. Yes, yes. Oh, sorry. You were saying? Your screen is not there. Like oh, can you see it now? No. OK. Maybe in his case only. Yeah. Uh, I can see 
I can yeah, see. I think, I, I think everyone yeah, I can, can see, see a screen too. Yeah, we can see a screen, sir. Yeah. Okay. There is something wrong with the uh, Pankaj. Yes. Here. So the regular expression module, so let me tell you what regular expression is. Regular expression is a way to communicate to a machine how to deal with text. Um, and again, regular expression exists in multiple languages, right? It's not something that only exists for um, Python. But there is a module that you can use to implement regular expression. Let me just show you directly. So let's say I have a text over here and I want to find where hello is written in the text. So I can start by just let me type this. So for this one, I'm going to do a regular expression called find all. So it's going to find all instances of hello in this text. Let's run it. So it's telling me that there are three instances of hello in this text. Now, there are many different regular expression functionalities that are, again, built into Python. Um, we can see it's match, multi-line. Again, you can test these out on your own time. Uh, right now, we're using find all. So what I can do is I can use a regular expression shortcut to specify exactly which hello I want. And again, these regular expression um, shortcuts or syntax is available online. It's not a part of this course, but I just want to show you how it's implemented. So forward slash B tells a regular expression that you want something which is a word boundary over here, and then you want a word boundary over here, and hello should be between it. This is the syntax when you want to use um, a regular, regular expression command with Python. So if I were to print this, hello, hello. So it's only printing this hello and this hello because I'm telling it that there should be a word boundary here and here. This hello does not have a word boundary over here, which is why it's not being picked up. This is a, so this is a small demonstration of the um, a regular expression tool in uh, Python. Okay, is that clear? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, great. So now um, we're going to do some code along work. I need you guys to sort of actually install a package. Let me go over which package we're talking about. So I, I wanted to give you one example of using a library. I went with Spacey because Spacey is relatively modern. Spacey is relatively modern, and um, at the same time, it uh, gives us a lot of uh, capability that we can easily use. Um, if you want to see Spacey's reference document, you can go on this link here. If you want to see Spacey's GitHub and actually how it's made, you can go on their GitHub link over here. So let's start by installing Spacey. Um, you all should have a virtual environment created at the start of the project. Uh, do you have this section here um, on your PyCharm? Yes. Right click on it and go on the terminal. So it says open in terminal. So here we're accessing the virtual environment of our current project. Over here, I want you guys to write pip install spacey. Now, what is pip install doing? We all, when we downloaded Python, uh, downloaded the package handler for Python called pip. Pip is going to search for spacey in its directory, and that directory is visible over here, right? This is where it's going to search for spacey and download it. So I've already downloaded, downloaded it. I want you guys to write pip install spacey over here and um, uh, install the package. This is the command here. Um, let me know when you guys are able to install it, right? It's not that large, so it shouldn't take that much time. Okay, so 
once it's installed, we'll be able to access Spacey's functionality um, using the import Spacey command, or even we can access a pro, uh, access a module within Spacey directly, right? So this is me accessing the la English language functionality of Spacey. <clears throat> Can everyone, has everyone installed Spacey? Just give me a quick yes. Um, I don't see any chat. Yes. Okay, yeah. great. Um, now what I need you guys to do is to create a small or any size text document. The sample that I'm using, wiki.txt, I've already posted it on the conversations here for this class. You can use that or you can use any txt file. So again, without using any spacey, just ignore this part right now, we can open a text file using this command over here. So here I'm giving it the directory of where that file is stored. The file name is over here. Um, and I'm telling it to print the lines inside this file. So let's see what it looks like. There you go. So this text file, it's a... Uh, um, Sherlock Holmes uh, uh, chapter, you can see that it, Python is able to access all the text over here. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to analyze this text using Spacey, the um, library you guys just downloaded. Are you mute? Uh, no, I'm I'm just okay, typing. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Okay. So what I've done using Spacey is actually tokenize the text over here. Again, you don't need to. Uh, you just need to uh, write this command for the tokenization to work. So if you want to replicate this, just uh, what we're doing here, I'll run you through it. Uh, we're, this is a function of Spacey, right? English. So we're setting a variable to English and we're creating another uh, variable called analysis and putting this text that we extracted inside this object. So you need to learn what an object is. An object is basically uh, tied to a library over here. The library here is Spacey, right? So this turns into a NLP object, which is of the English language. Now I can iterate over this object and we can turn this text into the words that make it up. So I took that text and I, this is called um, uh, tokenization, right? I created word tokens with it. You can do the same thing with sentences using Spacey. Um, and you know, you can, in your free time, you can really try that out. Um, again, the, this is a website for Spacey. You can look at all the features that you get while using Spacey. Um, is everyone able to replicate the code up till here? Ruby. Uh, Sad, actually, I, I faced some errors while installing the Spacey, so I've posted in the group. I'm not, I'm not sure uh, why I gave that error. Uh, what's the error? It's uh, like a uh, new matching distribution found for Spacey. Say that again, sorry. Uh, no matching distribution found for Spacey. Couldn't okay. find a version that satisfied the requirement. Okay. Oh, does anyone else get that error? Okay, I'll, um, um, you know, after the session, I'll uh, try to figure out what, what caused that issue. Um, now, another really interesting aspect about using libraries that are already built is that you can use some of the logic that is already there, right? So Spacey actually has a deep learning model that is ha it has already trained and that we can very simply use. Now, uh, to use it, you need to again go on your virtual environment, uh, right click on 
virtual environment and then open the terminal. And then this command is going to give you access to this already trained model. So again, we're using a simple library that we can easily access to access some really uh, complex stuff, which in this case is a deep learning model that you can, it's, it, SM means small, so it won't take that long to ins install. You can actually use it to make sense of text that you might have. Again, um, uh, let me show you what this stuff means. So um, there are the pre-trained uh, pre statistical models. You can see this is the one we're using. Uh, N core web, SM means small. You can see how accurate they are. You can see their size of the file you're downloading. You know, there's a medium size model and then there's a larger size model. Uh, the larger one is obviously more accurate, but for this exercise, we'll just use the smaller one. Um, are you guys able to install this command on your uh, terminal? Can anyone tell me if they've successfully done it up till here? Uh, some people are com having some issues. I'm reading all of the comments because I'm not able to load everything at the one time, so I'm reading one of them. Okay, okay. Just yeah, reading the issue. Okay, so again, um, I'm going to tell you one way you can use this pre-trained model. Um, you can look for more ways online on the documentation, right? So we're going to create a variable. Uh, I'll call it NLP2. And we're going to refer to this file that we just downloaded. And we're going to do dot load. Dot load, again, is a function um, that works with Spacey. And we're going to take that object, NLP2, and provide it with the text that we extracted over here. Right, so you can see we're providing it the text. Now here's where the interesting part starts. I can actually iterate over this text and detect entities within the text. So again, because this is a pre-trained model, the hard work is already done. You can just use it to do some really interesting stuff. Right, let me show you what entities look like. Shad, hi, this is Sonali. Uh, give us like five minutes. Like there's a lot of installations happening in the background. Just give us five minutes if anything okay. agrees with me and we'll then follow because we are doing both the things in parallel. It's a little difficult to okay, concentrate sure. on both. Yeah, that's what I was typing the comment as well. Like uh, either you focus on one thing because installation. Okay, okay fine. I'll wait for the installation to finish. Yeah, just uh, give us five we'll minutes. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Meanwhile, we're waiting. I have one question, Saad. Yeah. Um, uh, so you showed us date time um, to print the system date time. Is there any way yes. to change change the uh, system date time through our script through the Python script? Change to change it. Um, let me see. So when you want to change it, what do you mean? You want to change it in real time, or do you want to change the number you see? I want to change the number, like. Uh, um, if it is auto automatically set, I don't want to do it like that. I want to set the time, um, like say I'm using some app and I'm using for loop. And every time I run the loop, I, I want to run it for the different day and the time. So like that, and I want yeah, to change so, the system. Okay, so this uh, package is basically made so that you can get the system time, right? So this is all this is doing is getting the time right now. Uh, what you're talking about is actually doing some manipulation using a uh, specific time. It doesn't have to be today's time or any time. Yes, yes. For that, you wouldn't use dot now. What you would use, again, um, you can use date time. There are also other packages online that allow you to really easily manipulate time values. And they can. E they, you have packages that can even detect uh, different kind of time values that are written in text. And then you can you know, add dates to it, subtract dates to it, add time to it, and stuff like that. Um, so, I wouldn't do that with this command over here. Um, I don't have the packages in front of me right now, but uh, you know, if you just send me a note about this, I'll give you a package that you can use for that. Okay. Were you guys able to install uh, this? Uh, no, not yet. 
Okay, okay, I'm just going to okay, continue. Uh, Spacey, but never mind. I think we'll focus on the session and then go back to it later on. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, so. I'll post this command over <laughs> there on the conversations, so you can actually uh, do it uh, in your own time. Okay. So again, um, w once we feed it the text that we've extracted over here, that text becomes part of this uh, doc uh, variable, which represents this object. This is a spacey object. Now we can iterate over that and we can actually extract insights from it. So let me show you the list of all the available insights. So again, because this is a pre-trained model, I can actually detect people, um, organizations, all of these different things in the text very easily. So I can detect different dates in the text. I can detect, uh, you know, if they're, if they're ever talking about money or quantities, stuff like that. So let's start with person. I have the code here. I'm just going to write person here. Let's run this and let me get rid of this. Uh, this is a bit intensive in terms of the uh, processing. So if you have a slow computer, I would recommend cutting the text in half and that would make the time quicker. So as you can see, we just use Spacey to detect all the names of people in the text. There are a lot of names. Let me yeah. go to the top. So it's saying yeah. Irene Adler person, Holmes is a person. Every mention of a person is listed over here and it's recognizing that these are people. Um, we can do the same thing with other stuff. Let's say we want um, all the mentions of money in this text, right? Hi, this is Sonali again. One quick question. Does it identify yeah. Sherlock Holmes as two different person? No, it's going Sherlock to mention. Sherlock and Holmes? No, no, every time Spacey sees a person, a person's name, it's going to specify it. Right? It doesn't matter if it specified it before. It's just going to go over all of the text and try to pick out the people that are mentioned. No, for example, the first line itself, it says to Sherlock Holmes, she's always the woman. So I think uh, I saw Holmes as a person and Sherlock as a person two different times. Yeah, yeah. Is so that Again, Sherlock Holmes is probably mentioned multiple times. It depends on Spacey how many times it picks Sherlock Holmes. There's no defined rule for that because these are machine learning models that are already trained, right? So there is going to be uh, some inaccuracy here. So you can say you can see that in the small model you are going to get um, inaccuracies, right? It won't be perfect. Okay. So okay. sometimes it might detect them together. Sometimes it might be separate. But most of the time, Sherlock and Holmes, both of them would be a person. Um, I ran this with money and you can see that some $30 here is a mention of money. You have other mentions of money in this. So again, this is doing some really complex machine learning work, but you can access it very easily because you're using a library that already has a pre-trained pre model. Um, so have you guys been able, sorry? Yeah, even though if they mention about like say penny or dollar in a word, still it's considered as money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's very, uh, it's very capable. Again, we can try something else, right? Um, let's try. Mm. Mm, Noun, again. verb. Something. Yeah, so so it can do uh, the POS tagging as well. I haven't shown you how to do that. Yeah. Where it's going to go over each word and tell you if it's an adjective, adverb, or auxiliary. What we're doing right now is actually just entity recognition, really? right? Mm -hmm. um, you can try uh, POS tagging as well if you want to know the nature of each word in a text. And again, for all of this, we're just using Spacey, which again, I showed you how easy it was to access that library, right? Let's do GPE. So this is going to be geography. Mm -hmm. So country, city, state. Yep. And again, I just want to check, were all, are you guys able to download this or were there any issues? I didn't see any comments. 
Okay. Maybe so only as you get Ali having the issue but she is okay now looks like. Okay. Is she no, not really I'm stuck okay. with okay. this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll yeah, we'll definitely see what the error is on your end, right? No, no, no. like I just take it on my own. This is fine. Like yeah, I'm but... sure you guys have a time bound. No, no, you, uh, after class you can show us the um, uh, error that's coming up, okay? So again, I wanted the geographies in this text and it's pulling them out. Um mm -hmm. this is apparently a geography London, Egria, Hercu England, Prague, Warsaw, New Jersey. So it's just taking those out. So again, this is some really cool functionality that you can very easily access using Spacey. Uh, any questions so far? Um, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I have a question. Like, so just curious about uh, the data that displayed on this console. Can we? Is there any way we can display it on any file like text file or Excel? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So uh, there is a built-in functionality on uh, Python. It's called the write function. We, the way we're opening this file, you can actually write something to that file. Uh, we don't have time, so I won't show you right now. Mm -hmm. But you can just, uh, you know, I would Google writing a file in Python, and it's going to tell you how to use a very similar command to actually, rather than loading the stuff from uh, the text file, actually write the okay. stuff. So you can output this. Instead of doing print, you can output this stuff to a text file. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I also have a question. Is yes. there a way to validate this data? No. So again, this is a uh, machine learning model, right? So there is always going to be inaccuracy over there. And I, I'll show you something. One second. Yeah, so this model has been trained on blogs, news, and comments, right? So if you are using news and comments with this, it'll tend to be more accurate than if you're using some text that's different. Um, but again, there's there's always going to be inaccuracy over there. But this is just a tool that can help you do something faster, right? So if you want to scan through a lot of text really quickly, you would use this, but there will always be inaccuracy over there. Um, it doesn't really make sense to manually validate it. Um, but yeah, you'll have to accept a degree of inaccuracy when you're dealing with something like this. But again, this is just one example of what you can do with a library in Python. Okay, thank you. Uh, any more questions? Sad, when you say model, yes. Uh, when you say model is already trained, so what is the exact meaning of that? Sorry, say that again. Uh, so uh, you are saying that this model is yeah. See, so this model is already trained, right? Yeah. So exit meaning of that. Um. So uh, again, we won't go into detail on that, but the way yeah. you should think of it, high is, level, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The high level idea is that they took some data, which they had labeled as correct, and they took some data that was not labeled, right? So what they try to do is that they try to generate features from the label data to try to identify different things. So they probably took the name of entities and trained the model on it to find those entities. So there always will be inaccuracies. When you download that pre-trained model, you are depend on how well that thing has been trained. And you can see from the accuracy over here that it's been trained really well. But again, there always will be some degree of inaccuracy. And like, there's a whole topic on this that you can uh, read about on your own time. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, we're going to stop this exercise over here and we're going to go back to the PowerPoint. Um, one thing that Spacey also allows us to do is get rid of stop words. And we're going to see how we can use that. So your exercise for today is going to be to take any text document that is the only condition there is that should be more than 400 words. Now you can use any library. We went over Spacey, but you can use any li uh, other library as well. I want you to find the five most popular words in that text um, and five more popular words once you remove the stop words. Stop words are words like the, uh, um, me, right? Words that don't really have a lot of meaning. And again, you, if you explore Spacey's documentation, you will find that it's really easy to remove stop words. And then I want you to display that uh, uh, data to me, the five words, in, a, in the form of a bar chart like this one. 
Um, to display the bar chart, the library that you should be focusing on uh, that I would recommend is called uh, Matplotlib. Um, so yeah, uh, you can use another library as well. There's another library called Seaborn, which is really good. But Matplotlib is the most easy one to use. Um, I think I opened the documentation here. Yeah, so this is the documentation matplotlib.org. Now you can see how you can really get started with using it. So again, the point of this is to get you to use multiple libraries to solve the same problem. Um, and yep. uh, I would want you guys to attempt it. Again, once you attempt it, it's for your own learning. If you have any issues, reach out to me or Hethel and we'll see how we can fix it. Um, don't post the solution on the files of MS Teams since that's only for the teaching staff. Yeah, chat is fine. Like uh, Jyoti and other guys are also posting their solution in the chat. That is good idea. They can do over there. Not in WhatsApp, please. No, not <laughs> yeah. WhatsApp. In um, MS chat. Great. Okay. So is there any other clarification that you guys want on this question? I don't see any question asked by audience. They are yeah, already okay. asking directly. So that's yeah, it's good. a very simple exercise. Uh, uh, it's a very straightforward question to understand, right? The, the whole point is so that you can use different libraries and see how you can install them on your computer as well. And again, further reading on the Python standard library, you can actually on the book that we have for this class, Python for Everyone, you can actually find the entire reference of the Python standard library, right? The link that I showed you, uh, mm -hmm. this one here, it's also accessible. The important stuff is accessible in the book. Great, I think uh, uh, we mm -hmm. can bring the session to the end, unless Hethel, you want to add something? Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, do, do you have uh, your code open? Are you able to show the breakpoint if you have a time? Just quickly, just uh, put the breakpoint and debug the code if you can. Okay. Like I think the Paramin, Paramvir, uh, he wants to know how, how to debug, like how to use the breakpoints. Okay. But is it like, uh, I mean, probably it might require five, 10 minutes to really explain the concept, right? Mm, uh, yeah, maybe we can take it as a separate. Yeah, in the next, next session, maybe, you know, yeah. when you start the next session, you can have like first five, 10 minutes to. to yeah, yeah we can do that too, yeah. Because I, I think today is very tight with uh, this library concept. That's really interesting. So I don't want to disturb him to having separate time for breakpoints. So that's why. Yeah, we can do it next one. Okay, we'll, yeah, we'll start next session uh, focusing on that. Though. Yeah, that's okay. We can do it next next session, next one. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Awesome, yeah, guys. Uh, awesome, awesome. One more session. Great, thanks. Good, co good conversations, good, uh, good momentum. You should uh, you should probably uh, learn from Sumit and you should do joint presentation with Sumit for test automation as well. Okay. Yeah, good, good work, good work. Thank you, sir. Any questions yeah. from the audience? Just, all, all good? Uh, just one thing. Can you just um, paste this text to on the chat? For the uh, model or for the pip install oh, like the entire stuff like, um, like whatever commands you used with spacey specifically okay i'll just do this section over here um uh, what yeah. i'll do from the next session is all the important stuff i'll actually include it in the powerpoint as well okay hey, but uh, <laughs> hey um so sorry about uh, asking this you should be putting all these codes exercise codes that you're doing it in the github is it not uh yeah not i can the... do it i, yeah, I yeah. can do so that's I the can place do it on github yeah Okay. Yeah, and, and all of our audience should have access to the GitHub. If they don't, they have to send the GitHub ID so we can add them into that uh, that, that uh, repository, right? So okay, great. coding post, should go into yeah. the GitHub, not in the Teams. Great. I'll, I'll post the spacey, this uh, script on GitHub, and, and you guys will be able to access, access it. I'll do it today. Yeah. Yeah. For those who don't have a GitHub access, there is a post in uh, Kodathon or, Kodata or in general, so you can just go and ask uh, for the access and the programs teams will, will provide the access. Great. Um, I think we can end the session then. Yep. Yep. Guys, don't forget um, not to register in Eventbrite. Okay. You guys have a great evening and we'll talk soon. Great. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you.